Hey guys, Diane here, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite vampire books. I, I'm not a, I mean, I'm a fan of vampires, I guess, but I don't really gravitate toward vampire books just because it's not something that really draws me in. Like, I'm not a big fan of, um, like zombies and things like that. Vampires, I, I like vampires more than I like zombies, but, um, so yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about my favorite vampire reads. I'm going to leave out the classics like Dracula, uh, Salem's Lot, things like that, which I have read. Dracula, you know, you don't really need to necessarily talk about that because everybody knows what that's about. It's about Dracula. <laughs> um, and that book I read, I read that a while ago and it was, you know, it was a classic. To me, classics aren't always enjoyable anymore because they are so dated and yeah, that's cool, but... Is that something I'm really going to get too excited about? Probably not. It was it was fine. It was Dracula. Uh, Salem's Law, I did enjoy. That was pretty dated. It wasn't one of my favorite Stephen King reads. It wasn't a favorite of anything, honestly. But, um, you know, so I'm not going to really go into, like, the classics like that. I also read Twilight back in, like, when I was in my 20s. And the first book was enjoyable. I did like the first book. I don't care what y'all think of me. I did like it. I didn't read any more after that, but... The first one, for what it was, I did enjoy. I did like it. I watched the movie, wasn't a big fan, and that's kind of where it stopped. But at that point in time, I did like the first Twilight book, so <laughs> judge me. Um, but I'm going to start my countdown. It's not necessarily a countdown. I have four. So I'm going to start with Let the Right One In. Let the Right One In by John Lingvist. Lingvist, John Lingvist. And this book was really dark. This is barely a I mean, this doesn't feel like a vampire book at all. This I mean, it's a vampire book, but it's so dark and depressing. It almost feels like a drama. And this is a super super dark book. When there is there was like a a sentence in this book that I will never forget. I wish I honestly could, but I can't. Um and this book is about um it's basically about two kids. One is a vampire and one isn't. And it kind of goes through the things that they're going with, they're going through and things they're dealing with. It's going with the, um, the human that she's living with and that's kind of posing as her parent. Um, but this book is so dark and it's so sad. Um, I did like it. I did enjoy it. It's not too long. It's like, it's 469 pages. So it's a little bit of a longer book, but, um, you honestly don't feel the length on this book. It is a really bleak book. I read this, I think it was probably in the fall at some point, in some one of these falls. And um, I don't think I've actually seen the movie. But it doesn't matter. Anyways, but the book was really good. And this is one of my, one of those books that you don't really forget, that you remember always. And you're like, ah, oh, man, it was... It, absolutely chilling is right this was a really good book so anyways moving on to one of my other <laughs> reads and I know you guys are like seriously Abraham Lincoln the Vampire Hunter so this book <laughs> I really liked this book I thought it was so fun I loved the movie and slavery and vampires make so much sense together because it's like those two hand in hand it it makes more sense that some you know, evil, like demonic thing did this versus a human, you know what I mean? So to me, this made perfect sense. This is probably history right here. <laughs> um, but I really did like this. This was just a fun read. It was easy. It was something that, you know, didn't take itself too seriously, which I really enjoyed. I just really thought this was a whole lot of fun. Okay, so for my next book, and this is one of my top favorite books of all time, is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And I think this was on some other lists that I have on my channel, but um, this book was phenomenal. This was such a good book. And when I started reading it, like I would laugh out loud because some of the parts in this book, these characters are amazing. I love this book so much. And it was fun, but it was also super dark. There's some really, it almost surprised me how dark it got because the beginning is so, it just feels like so kind of like, not necessarily the 80s vibe, but it's real kind of, you know, you have your, your book club and all, you know, all these stay at home moms are kind of getting together and talking. I mean, and 
some of these, <laughs> some of these characters I just loved. I'm like, oh man, I just love this book so much. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, it got really dark. There's some really dark parts in this book, but you know, you want that with the vampire book, obviously. So, um, I would definitely recommend this to anybody who's like looking for anything. <laughs> just, it's so good. Um, yeah. So this was just a really good book. This is probably just my, it's not my top favorite vampire book. It's one of my top books, but it's not necessarily my favorite vampire book. But this is just such a good book. I love this book. And my fav, my actual favorite vampire book, I don't have the ver, I don't have the physical copy because I read it on, I listened to it on Audible, but it's called The Lesser Dead by Christopher, Christopher Buhlman. And this book, I got this recommendation from Adam Caesar. And this book was so good. This was something that I wasn't really um, expecting. I didn't really expect to really like it as much as I did. Like I said, I'm not, typically I don't look for vampire books. And if I do, it's usually in October because it's it just feels like that's the right time to read it is in October. But that book was really good. It's about um, kind of like a clan of vampires. It's in New York City. It's in like 1960 or 1978. It's kind of set in the 70s, 70, almost 80s. And... Um, it's about this younger vampire and how, you know, kind of their way of life. Like I said, it's almost, it's not a coven, but it's a, um, like a, you know, like a group of vampires and they live under the city. So, um, this was a really good take on vampires and it had some really good twists that I didn't see coming. I kind of had, I think I had to re-listen to the ending cause I was like, wait, what did you just say? So that was a really fun book. I really liked that book. And like I said, I think that's probably one of my, that's probably my top vampire book just because it was so unexpected. I didn't really see myself enjoying it that much. And, um, and I really did. So, but yeah, so that's just a little rundown of all the vampire books I've read. Like I said, I've read a few classics. Not, I haven't read, you know, any of Anne Rice. I've seen the interview with the vampire probably 57 times. So I've seen the movie so much that I didn't really necessarily think that it was like, do I need to read the book? I mean, I guess you can let me know in the comments. My husband read it and he loved it. I think y'all, he think he read some of the second one too, but, um, it's, and it's really long. I'm like, I've already seen the movie. The movie's long. So I know the movie's long. The book's even longer. And it's just, do I want to dedicate my time to reading something I already know all about? So I don't know. Like I said, you can let me know in the comments. But if you found this, um, <laughs> if you found this video fun or if you want to talk more about the books or, you know, if you have any vampire books that you think that I need to read, please let me know in the comments and we'll see you next time.